I turned this kitchen with its pink cabinets, outdated fixtures, popcorn ceilings, blue walls, four layers of old flooring into this kitchen. Believe it or not, I did almost all of it myself over the last four months. And if you've been following my page, Welcome to the Woods, then I would assume you're at least a little bit excited to see the kitchen reveal. Let's get into how I did it. First was demolition. So I sold the appliances that were in the kitchen. They still worked okay. I cleaned out all the cabinets. It was full of stuff because when we bought the house, we let the people leave whatever they wanted. Now, I took down the cabinets pretty carefully by removing the screws because I'm going to try and reuse a lot of them. I didn't come at them with a sledgehammer like they do in the home improvement shows, although I think I'm not even strong enough to swing a sledgehammer, but I am strong enough to manage to get these cabinets down off the wall. I also removed four layers of flooring. I needed the flooring to be low enough that the laminate I placed didn't mess up any door thresholds. And then I also removed the sink and the countertops. I'm going to be reconfiguring this kitchen layout, so I did need to do all new counters. And then the sink was just not in great shape and I had three holes drilled where I just wanted one. So I'm going to get new. Also went forth removing the doorway that was there. Now, this was an intimidating project for me. I've never really done anything like this, but I did my research and I figured I could take it one step at a time and I was able to successfully close this door. The kitchen before the layout was just like one big walkway and this home has lots of exterior exits. So by removing this one, I get to have a wall space for more cabinetry and the fridge and it just makes the whole kitchen more functional. I removed the popcorn ceilings as well by scraping the texture and then I applied a texture medium over it from Modern Masters. This gave it this hand troweled plaster look and I loved that. After demolition was complete, the first project that I started on was to repurpose the upper cabinets into a banquet bench. I completely refinished them and modified them so that they would fit together in an L shape. I think this clever upcycle gives hidden storage and charming seating that works well in the corner of this room. Next up, I painted the walls and continued refinishing cabinetry for the lower cabinets. This actually took me three weeks and it was so much work, but the old paint job was terrible and I didn't like the trim detail. So I removed all of that and I sanded all the fronts down to get a really smooth finish. I rearranged the cabinets that I had I did have to add one prefabricated 36 inch cabinet and I modified that to look like the rest. I also built a custom pan rack at the end of the run of cabinets where I had this weird space left over. The cabinet hardware was sponsored by Bell with Keeler and I truly think it made this kitchen look like a million bucks. The cabinet hardware is heavy duty and beautiful. It's called the facet pull. After the cabinets were in, I was able to lay flooring. Our flooring was sponsored from zenetflooring.com and it is absolutely gorgeous. It was so popular that it was back ordered. But then somehow when it was getting delivered, it got sent to Vegas instead of Minnesota. So it was a circus trying to get it here. But thankfully, Zenet Flooring's customer service is great and they got it all figured out. I installed this myself. The wide plank laminate is actually waterproof and the click together style is easier for DIY installation. At this point, the kitchen was starting to look so nice, but I had many more design ideas up my sleeve. Next, I built a floating shelf and that covered a lot of the area the upper cabinets would otherwise be. The floating shelf had hidden brackets behind the drywall, so I cut out the drywall and put the brackets installed onto the studs. Then I patched it and I alternated the brackets so that it would distribute the weight on the shelves. And these are so, so strong. I built all of these shelves out of one sheet of three quarter inch cabinet grade plywood. So they were very affordable as well. I think it cost me $92 for that sheet of plywood. For counters in this kitchen, I worked with DIYConcrete.com to fabricate countertops out of concrete with foam rails and you just like pour them and then flip them just like stone onto the cabinets. Then I covered them all in a Microtech concrete topping that gave the entire backsplash and countertop the look of concrete. I colored it beige so it would work with the aesthetic of the kitchen and I really, really love how this turned out. It's very textured. It gives so much movement and interest to the space. 
After the concrete counters were done, I thought the beige paint blended in too much, so I repainted above the floating shelf to be white. I don't always get it right the first time. Now I want to share more about the hutch that you see in the corner. With the concrete counters, I put that hutch in place as I was doing the second coat. This is actually a living room bookshelf that was left in the house. And when I saw that it matched with all the trim work throughout the home, I decided to try and utilize it in the kitchen design as a hutch. So I'm cutting it down to fit and then I'm just going to trim it up. I cut these trim pieces custom, stain them, and then installed them with a nail gun. And it looks so intentional and beautiful in this corner. Now that all the building was done, it came time to install everything to get this space back to a functional kitchen. I installed the sink and the faucet. I went with a drop-in style sink to protect the concrete counters a bit better. I also installed the range hood with a bit of help from my electrician. Notice how I determined the thickness of the floating shelf to match the bottom of the range hood vent so it all flowed seamlessly. I love that. It's about two and a quarter inches thick. I did not vent to the outside yet because this kitchen won't get used much in the near future. In the meantime, I'll use charcoal filters, but in the future we'll probably drill holes and get it vented. I also installed lights that give the space a gallery feel. Links to all the products shown in this video can be found in the description. The last DIY I included in this space was a fridge glow up. The space I left for the fridge was only 32 inches wide, so I had to repurpose an old single door refrigerator that we were using at my house. I fixed the dents and filled holes with where the handles were attached with this steel stick from JB Weld. I removed like the Whirlpool logo and there were other holes throughout that this product actually worked wonderfully to fill. I sanded the whole thing when the steel stick was dry and then I painted it with this urethane enamel paint from Bear that's actually mint for metal. It's self-leveling and highly durable so the finish came out awesome even though I just rolled it on. I also attached the same lovely hardware from Bell with Keeler to the fridge as I did on the cabinets. I simply used a heavy duty construction adhesive for this. I'm not really sure how long it's gonna last, but I couldn't figure out another way to drill through the back of the fridge door. The other appliances in the room are so much nicer than the fridge, so the fridge had to level up at least somewhat to match. The dual fuel range was sponsored by Cosmo Appliances. I love that the burners have so much power and use gas while you have the steady heat and cooking temps of electric for the oven. This 36 inch range is so affordable and highly reviewed. So if you're in the market for new appliances, click on my link to Cosmo in the description. They also sent a really cool toaster oven that has all kinds of functionality to bake, rotisserie, toast, even air fry, and more. Since I had the electrician wire an outlet into the hutch, this little oven fits perfectly in that spot. Now this video moved kind of fast, but all of these projects are broken out and detailed on my channel. This might seem an overwhelming amount of work, but this detailed four months of what I've been doing. This space is unrecognizable from what it was before. It's hard to believe this kitchen became this. I really love it, but I wanna hear your thoughts in the comments. What was your favorite design aspect? Did anything surprise you? Or what would you do differently if you were renovating this kitchen? So I wanna detail a little more of what I have displayed in here for staging. The pottery is work from my sister Anne as well as some of her pottery friends. And you can support them, they are freelance artists, by following the link in the description. The hanging pots behind the range, I just hung up with a curtain rod that I cut to size to match the 36 inch width. I love that those pots are all copper and they give this beautiful shiny gleaming metallic to the space. Don't you love how old cabinets always have the pull-out cutting board? I have that at my house. I had it in the farmhouse I grew up in and I hate that a lot of new cabinetry doesn't have that integrated so I'm glad I was able to repurpose these cabinets from the 60s or whenever they were made to still have that feature in the kitchen. It's so charming. The storage under the breakfast bench has got to be one of my favorite design aspects of the kitchen because without upper cabinets and just an open shelf, it's nice to have more storage that you just don't realize is even there. The kitchen actually has a lot of storage, probably more than it had before because I added that whole 36 inch cabinet and I have specific spaces like the pull out pan rack for specific things. So it's all just organized nicely. 
Many items on the shelves were Instagram and TikTok exclusive DIYs, like the abstract painting and some of the vases. So if you follow me on those platforms, the link's in the description if you don't, but you get to see some of those little crafts that I do that you don't get to see in other channels. Now that this kitchen renovation has come to an end, I'm honestly just in shock. I can't believe I did almost all of this myself with just a little bit of hired help from an electrician. I really, really am proud of it. It's probably one of the most involved DIYs I've ever done. And I really hope you can appreciate the love and passion and hard work that went into this. Thank you so much for watching Welcome to the Woods and supporting me. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that bell to get notified when I publish my next video. Mm -hmm.